What's up everyone? Welcome to another podcast episode. Uh, today we are talking about real estate investment. It's one of my favorite uh, topic to talk about and I am not even kidding. This is one of the most valuable podcast you will ever hear. How to get into real estate investment? What are the fears people usually have? How to think about down payment, how to think about renting, how to think about finding a renter, real estate agent and all of the fun stuff. Dawal is the guest. Uh, he's a network engineer at Amazon, but this video is about his journey into getting into stock investment and real estate investment. And I want to, you know, inspire a lot of people that don't just keep your money in the bank and, you know, make your money work for you. And this is the new podcast series I'm starting with. A lot of people who are now, you know, well settled, getting into the real estate investment, getting into stock investment, how they are doing it and what is their journey. Dawal is so, so kind. He's happy to share his journey. He just invested uh, into his new rental property, which is in Texas. Uh, amazing story. I hope, I really hope that you find this helpful, encouraging and inspiring. If you do, please uh, let me know in the comment section because that's how I feel motivation that you are liking something which I'm making it. But anyway, I hope you do enjoy it. Please, please, please let me know in the comment section of what do you think about this style of podcast? Would you like it more of this or less of this? Please let me know. So that gives me a feedback of what to make next. That's it. And now I'll let you enjoy the episode. Thank you, Dawal, for doing this. Really means a lot to me. Uh, thank you for coming to the show and uh, i'm so excited to share your journey and i'm excited to find out that you are good you just like me and you also know our other guests so it's like super super coincidence but i'm so glad we met and thank you for being here yep definitely thank you for having me and i'm excited to share everything i know and yeah. hopefully that would help help somebody yes so let's do a quick intro before uh, be- before we get started for people who might not know you. So like, what what do you do right now? Where are you from? Where are you right now? And all the fun stuff about you. Um, yeah, definitely. So my name is Dawal Chotalia. I work at as a network development engineer in Seattle at Amazon. Uh, I came to US in 2014 uh, to study my master's in electrical engineering. Uh, that was in Fairleigh Dickinson University, New Jersey. Uh, after my graduation, I worked about three years in Texas uh, for Cisco, and then I moved to Seattle for working uh, for Amazon. Such a cool portfolio. So again, for those of you who are watching this, uh, please let us know in the comment section if you would like to know more about his career uh, journey. Again, in the intro, I like I said that this is going to be more on real estate podcast uh, because that is something I'm really interested in. So. He has, you know, amazing journey of like net being a network engineer. And I know he said it very casually like Amazon, but it's Amazon <laughs> and Cisco. So, so, you know, and also the university is not so famous, right? Like I, I haven't heard of that university. Yeah, yeah it's not that famous. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so again, it's a, it's going to be a cool story because a lot of people think that you, your university has to be super branded and big, but look at him, like he doesn't have it, but his first job was in Cisco, which is also a big company and now in Amazon. So of course, uh, so I'm, I'm excited to know that part of your journey as well, but we'll wait for audience to comment and I know they would want us to do it. So we'll do it again, but this one is all Definitely. about, you know, stocks and real estate let's let's talk about like how why did you start thinking about like okay i want to invest into stock why why stock market uh, yeah definitely so when when i had to file my taxes mainly uh, for this year uh, that's when i got uh, since i i worked at amazon last whole year even if i i, I was paying my monthly taxes but even though uh, i got a f- big tax bill this year in, <laughs> in March. So that's when I kind of knew. Uh, I, I heard before that, I heard a lot of people talking about if you invest, then you can save some kind of, you can get some kind of tax benefits and all. Uh, so that's when really I, I started uh, researching more about uh, the investment, stock investment, uh, or even the, uh, even the real estate investment. And uh, so, yeah, that was my starting point not, not too lo- long ago. Uh, it was just a few months uh, back in in March or April this year. 
Oh, okay. So you're like a brand new investor. So again, yeah. I, for the people who, what he's trying to say is like, you know, of course, if you're in California, Seattle also has a very big taxes. Uh, for example, if you're, let's say, if you're making $100,000 in California, you pay roughly about 30% tax or so. So you are basically getting in hand $70,000 and $30,000 you're paying in a tax. Uh, and what he's saying is that sometimes your company will not take out all of that money in your paycheck. So when you have to file your taxes, you have to pay this big money to IRS, which is the tax uh, system. And there are some ways where if you invest into properties, you can deduct a lot of money as your taxes. And that's what he's talking about. Again, we'll, we'll if you want to know more about this tax hacking kind of thing, let, him, let me know in the comment section. So that is very interesting. Also yep. about stock in investment, that was also something you started this year or last year, or was that been, you've been investing in stock for a long time? Uh, yeah, I've been investing uh, for like three to four years, but mm. uh, not not too much. Uh, I was just, you know, following some people and then if they say I, I'll throw some money into it, but it was not kind of a serious uh, uh, serious investment but uh, i started doing the serious investment this year only in the stock as well and yeah in the real estate wow yep. nice uh, so both like stock and real estate you went on all in this year okay uh, mostly this year yes yeah okay what what's your before we get into real estate let's talk about stock investment what's your strategy like what do you usually like how do you think about investing in What's your strategy? Is it like monthly? Is it uh, based on the stock market? Like, okay, it's going to go up and down or is it like your long-term investor? What's what's your mindset? What's your strategy? Uh, yeah, definitely. So I'm basically definitely a long-term investor. Uh, whatever, I have like three stock portfolios, uh, three stock uh, accounts. Uh, one is my retirement account. One is my long-term uh, investment account and second and the third one is like where I can you know play around try some new things like uh, call options put options all those oh, uh, nice. whatever I whatever I learn uh, so if I want to try that out I do that in Robin Hood so yeah whatever money I get uh, definitely the 401k uh, and IRA that is my retirement account uh, I deduct all those money before the taxes first and then after that whatever I get uh, I kind of put aside my expenses, uh, my rent and everything, uh, the uh, monthly expenses. And after that, I, I kind of, uh, 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 I throw that into into my stock account. Uh, most of the money I put it in my long-term investment. And then I put some money into Robinhood to play around with things. Nice. Uh, did you watch my last video? I mean, I don't know if you watched uh, my 100,000 video. In this, I said exact or almost similar to what you just uh, said. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I watched it, but I, I didn't watch it. The, what, the full video. I, I watched it some of the some of your investment and strategies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I like it. Like I like that first you put it in your 401k Roth IRA and then uh, then you have your monthly expenses and then whatever the money is left, you either put it in your long-term or Robin Hood. What's the long-term platform do you use? Uh, Fidelity. Uh, that's oh, the one I have for my 401k as well from and Amazon. Uh, so yeah, that's the one I use. Okay. What are some of your favorite stocks to invest? Like, Do you invest into individual companies or when, and when you say long-term investment, is that companies stock you invest or is it index funds or like what's what's your typical go-to stock uh yeah sure so uh my my retirement account they are all investment at index funds hmm. uh, so those are like little less riskier and I want those to be the index funds, mostly S&P 500s. Uh, on my long-term stocks, uh, I own mostly the big tech companies uh, like uh, I have think, Facebook. Yeah. Yep, yeah, Facebook, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Google. Tesla, yeah. Tesla, yeah, all, all those companies. And mm. then in in my Robinhood account, I kind of play around. Uh, or most of my Robinhood is also long-term, but uh, that is the account that if if I want to try out something new, I do that there. Right. Uh, so those have some of the short-term plays as well. 
uh, I I tried Robinhood, I tried Coinbase, uh, oh, all those for cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So nice. Uh, okay. Uh, for those of you who are like super new into investment and stocks and all of that, what we are talking about, he's he's really mentioning three different types of things. Uh, one is his retirement account. And when a lot of people hear about 401k and retirement, all they think about is that someone is go taking out of their salary and going into this account. But even in that, you can decide where you want to put the money into. So he has specifically chosen to put it in S&P 500 or as there are S&P 50, 100. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of companies over there, a lot of options, but mainly it is an ETF or an index funds, which is a collection of companies. So that's his 401k. Do you do how many, like, is that percentage of your income? Do you put it in six, six uh, percent? Yeah, it was six percent, but right now I just... Uh put it up to 15%. I just increased it. Oh, nice. As of now. Of yeah. course, uh, Amazon may become. <laughs> 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 so the reason people do 6% is because most company, if you do 6%, then they will put the same amount uh, as, uh, as you put it. Uh, again, I'll make a detailed video on 401k. So I don't want to go into that detail, but uh, that's cool. And then when he talks about long-term investment, again, he's using, he has his own personal account in the same brokerage, which he's using his Fidelity. That's where he uses long blue chip accounts with blue chip stocks, which is what I do too. And Robinhood sounds like you are also like kind of mix uh, index funds, more smaller companies, uh, big companies, and you play around with options and all. Options is very risky. So play, play, uh, play very safe. Uh, people... I know people make a lot of money, but people also lose a lot of money. Yep. So I personally a, mostly lost money on the options. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you are a very beginner, don't get into that trap. Uh, just you know, focus on investing in a big companies and index funds, and you know, slowly build up your portfolio. So now let's talk about uh, rental property. I know that we talked about it. You have a rental property, which is what I'm very interested in. And how? When did you like? start thinking i know that you mentioned that you started thinking about in march or so what was your first thought like okay you know let's uh were you scared like you want to invest into rental property what happens and all of that fun fun stuff comes with the rental property sure yeah uh yeah whenever i started uh you know, looking in, looking more into investments, I found out that uh, real estate could be one of the best ways to build your wealth, build build money. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so that is something uh, uh, I got a lot of interested in, uh, and then I started looking into the benefits uh, mm -hmm. and everything. I was little scared in at at first uh, because I did not know a lot of things, uh, and I pretty much knew nothing about at that time. And then I started researching a little bit and then I find out there are a lot of tax benefits uh, for that. You can depreciate your property and get some tax benefits. Uh, you can, you know, it, it, later on, if you want to sell uh, the property, then also you get some of the benefits. Uh, and then once you make it a rental property, then somebody else will pay your rent. Uh, so that is, definitely one of the biggest uh, advantage and somebody basically somebody else is uh, increasing your net worth every single month when they pay the yeah. rent uh, and so that was uh, mainly the reasons uh, that are uh, one of the biggest reason was also to also the leveraging leveraging the money uh, because there's a power in leveraging the money as well. Uh, if you have like, for example, $20,000, you put in the stock and it depreciate 10%. And that same $20,000, if you, you you put it 20% down and you buy a 100,000 property, in that property appreciate that, that 10%, uh, there is a lot of difference in money in that. And for the advantage with real estate is, you cannot get called out on the loan as long as you make your monthly payment. So there is no risk of that as long as you are making your uh, making sure you pay the mortgage every month. Uh, banks cannot call you out on on your on your mortgage. Uh, whereas in in stocks, 
if you do the margin, then definitely banks can, uh, the brokerages would call you out on that. Yeah. If Again, I never, so. this is my personal opinion and advice, never do margin investing. What is margin in investing? Uh, so if you go to Robinhood or other platforms, what they say, let's say you don't have money to invest. Uh, if you have only $50, uh, they, you can basically say, I want to put $100 in Apple stocks and they will loan you this $50 uh, saying that that's your margin. Uh, and you know whenever you get time, put it back that $50 into your stock account. Uh, and that's called margin investing. So you are basically taking money from this brokerage account and putting it into the stock market. And that has a very high interest rate, right? Like I, I think exactly. it's a... 13%, 23% sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but uh, it, it is super high. So don't only invest the money which you have it in your stock account, uh, brokerage account. Don't borrow it and then invest yeah, into stock market. Exactly. <laughs> and if your portfolio goes down, not to mention, uh, if your portfolio do, goes down like 30%, 40%, they only allow an, up to a certain percentage of leverage. So mm -hmm. without even asking you, they will sell your stocks to cover their margin. Uh, and then ah, you'll be screwed yeah. at, at the lower price, your yeah. stock would be sold. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you're using Robinhood, there's a setting uh, where you can turn it off uh, or for margin investing. I have turned it off. So there, you never even make that mistake. <laughs> yeah, you're not exactly. even tempted. <laughs> uh, and I think most of the brokerage account has that setting where you can turn it off. Uh, right. What, so let's talk about the tax benefits. Like, you know, I know man, you mentioned a couple of times. So what are some of the tax benefits if you buy a property? What can you do with it? Yeah, definitely. So first one would be the tax write-offs. So if you spend some money on your property uh, uh, for repairs and everything, you can deduct that. Uh, you can write that off against your income. So for example, if you spend $10,000 on your property, at the same time, you are making your property better. Uh, and also that $10,000, uh, you can deduct uh, against, you can write it off against uh, your income. So that is one. Uh, so that means your taxable income from your salary goes down. Uh, that is one. Second one is depreciation. So let's say you can, let's say you own a property and that property, some of the times it depreciates in value some of the things for example kitchen that that's not going to last forever right so that depreciates in value you can every year when you file your taxes you can depreciate some part of your properties um, and you can take uh, tax advantages on that and then there are like if you there are a lot of other benefits as well if you are only there as a primary residence you only you live in that house for two years and then in next three years, you sell it. So within five years, if you have lived in the house for two years and you sell it, uh, then all of your gains are tax-free. So for example, if you buy a 300,000 property and five years later, it is 500,000 property and you have lived in that for at least two years uh, and rest of the years, even if you rented it, uh, then all those 200,000 gains will be tax-free. You don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. There. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, and again, uh, tax is a little complicated. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people who are watching are maybe new to this. Uh, if you are already aware of all this, uh, great uh, comment and let me know. So I know my audience too, but I'm guessing there are a lot of this it's like just, you know, graduating, graduating out and trying to learn all this and getting into the market and investment. What he gave the first example, what you gave the first example is like, uh, deducting the ten thousand dollars if you do some an expenser. So, for example, let's say he bought a prop. His salary is hundred thousand uh, dollars and paying thirty percent tax, which is now, um, you know, uh, thirty thousand dollars, right? So, uh, so the tax which is getting implied on him is thirty percent on hundred thousand dollars. So, when he says deducting or deductible, uh, so let's say if he made ten thousand dollars of expenses on his property he can deduct it from hundred thousand so now the thirty percent is only on ninety thousand dollars versus all hundred thousand dollars that's what deduction means right please correct me exactly. if i'm wrong <laughs> yep that's exactly right yeah so he could have 
$50,000 of whole new roof, uh, like a solar roof. Um, now exactly. that's in a trend. <laughs> he <laughs> could right. have uh, like solar roof and you can have $50,000 off and you will only pay $50,000. Uh, you will only pay 30% tax on $50,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay, so oh, go ahead. What are you uh, no, just one other, wanted to say, if, even if you crossed it, uh, the example that I used for five years, even if you crossed it five years, let's say uh, there's just mentioning one more benefit of that. Uh, if you want to uh, sell this property uh, mm -hmm. later on after five years, six years, seven years, if you want to sell this property and buy a bigger property, for example, if you are uh, selling a $3,000, $300,000 property and you want to buy any property that is higher than that, uh, then you can do something called 1031 and you don't have to pay any taxes, even if you cross that five years mark, uh, as long as yes. you're buying the bigger property. So right. that is also one of the uh, extra benefit. Yeah. That you can yeah. Have later. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Uh, that's that's what my uh, broker, uh, real estate agent keeps telling me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's nice. nice. Okay, uh, so you got into like you decided like okay, you know you researched a lot. Uh, you had no idea, and then you learned about U.S. market, how housing market work. What mm -hmm. what are some of the first steps you took to you know get into real estate? Uh, yeah, definitely. So the first, there are some prerequisites for getting into real estate. It's not something you can start without planning. Mm -hmm. So one of the thing you need as a prerequisite is the credit, good credit. Mm. Uh, so anything above, I would say 760 should be pretty pretty good. Uh, and then the down payment. So if anytime you are not going to live in the property, you are buying it as a rental property, and then you need to put 20% down. So mm. whatever the amount uh, you, you are buying the home for, you need to put 20% down and the rest 80% you can get it as a loan. Uh, so unless unless you have a duplex or like a extra unit and mm -hmm. yeah, you that, can you then you can buy as a primary residence and then you know have that extra unit as a guest unit and you can have a renter over there that's right e even even airbnb can qualify for that so yes that is yes. also one of the thing yeah so i kind of have had the good credit score uh, good uh, i had the down payment saved up and i did wanted to kind of look into two areas uh, one is texas and one is uh, washington so mm. i started kind of researching the market you know what makes sense what what kind of property makes sense uh washington in washington where i live in bellevue uh, nothing really did it did make sense for the rental property mm. uh, because of the hoa most of the even mm. uh, here uh, the single family houses you won't even get below 900k or a or million dollar oh so that's the starting point in Bellevue where I live uh, so I would have to get into some condo even townhouses are not <laughs> uh, very expensive so con for condos the HO monthly HOA is basically the homeowners association uh, those are at least 400 to 500 dollar a month yeah. and that when you calculate the numbers that kind of eats up from sense. your profit and numbers doesn't make sense because you're even after paying down 20 percent down payment your mortgage mortgage will be more than your uh, your rent that we, you would get so that was not making sense so for rental property definitely i choose texas and uh, yeah i had a friend there uh, who was also with me and uh, in my so it's been a in, partnership in, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now uh, I contacted my friend and uh, talked to him about about uh, if he would be interested in getting into it. And just like me, he was also, you know, researching a lot about real estate. So that's how we got into partnership. Nice. Maybe next time we should buy it together. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Let me know. Uh, nice. Uh, yeah, we, we see this. This is the. Big people like, ah, chalo, let me know. I'll put my money in. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when you have like, talk. you know, cash lying around, you, you know, you can talk like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So cool. Uh, for people who don't know what is 
HOA, it's like you said, it's a housing owners association. The, I'll explain it in a separate video. There's like a lot of new concepts. We are introducing it and I've never talked about it in a solo video. So mm -hmm. uh, please let me know if you're interested in these things. And if you don't understand any of this uh, comment, and so I can make those videos to explain you what all those means. I understand because I'm in the market as well and I've been in United States for a very long time. So I know what he's talking about. Okay. Um, so another interesting thing which I noticed is that you chose a different state and a different city than you're living in. That's a scary moment, right? Like for a lot of people, when you're you, one, you're investing in a property, you're not going to live in that. And two, it's not even close to you. It's not like 10 minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes nearby that you can just go and drive. It's like, or like you have to take a flight if something happens. So yeah. how did you overcome that fear that, okay, there is, you know, I'm going to invest it and I'm going to have that faith that everything is going to go okay and invest in a different state. Yeah. So I actually, to begin with, I did not have that fear uh, that it is a remote property. One, maybe because of, I had my partner there, uh, but mm -hmm. mostly I knew that you know, even after buying the property, the main work that it takes is when you go look for the property, that's when you need somebody or you need yourself to go look at the property and check. After that, once you, once you're under contract, once you buy the property, uh, managing the property, it's really not that hard, even if you are remote. So oh, that's because, something. Uh, unless, yeah. unless you're like doing a long-term rent, like do you, have a property manager who's managing that or? No, I, I, I don't have a property manager, but uh, it's, I don't find it really hard, man, because if let's say your, your tenant calls you, Hey, I have this problem, this problem. I have a plumbing problem. You go on yelp.com, you find a good contractor, you, uh, you know, check the reviews and everything. You call that contractor. Hey, I, this is my address you find a local contractor, a local contractor goes there, fix it. That's the same thing property manager is going to do. It's just, you are doing some extra work. And second thing is, even if I have my partner there, I don't expect him to, you know, go check out in something in the property uh, every time if there is some problem. Uh, it's you, in today's world, you can get it done online. Right, so That's I right. think uh, the moral of the story really is over here is that you should, you must be willing to take that risk that things will go wrong and you will just have to either, you know, if you have an on-site property manager, you can hire a property manager to manage all of this. Uh, like he said, like if you have a renter and they complain about something or something is broken, your AC is broken, you, you will have to have someone who can go and fix it. Uh, in property manager's case, they will take care of it because you're paying that property manager. But in your case, you are like even above, like a little bit, like you like, <laughs> it's like, I'll just look up somebody. I mean, obviously you will have that list of people already lined up that, okay, if this happens then I'm going to go find this person and contact this person. And then you will obviously keep working on those with those people over and over time. So yeah, you just have a lot to of people can help you as, as well. So for example, in my case, I actually don't have that list of people that can go fix mm -hmm. the things, but uh, I have a real estate agent who is also a real estate investor in that area. So, you know, once you build a good relationship with them, uh, if you have any problem, you can always uh, reach out for the guidance. You know, this is the problem. Whom can I reach out to? And then uh, if, the re if your real estate agent is also the investor in that area and he's also doing the same stuff, he would generally have uh, the people uh, that can go fix it. Yeah. So again, like I think it's just the fear that you feel mm -hmm. that you cannot manage it or you feel that you don't have control over it. But I, I think once you, you know, pass that fear, I think it's going to be okay. Like you said, like, you know, yeah. the hardest part is the contract phase and, and finding a good property. Once that's done, it's easy um, to, you know, manage it. Now yes. um, let's say you, again, how did you find out that property and like, what were the steps? Is, did you say Austin? Uh, no, it was near Dallas. It, it 
this town called Little Elm. Oh, okay. uh, it is near it's in the DFW area. Mm. Yeah, so once we decided we wanted to partner up and we wanted to buy the property, we decided our budget, uh, which was around 300K to 350K. Uh, so we wanted to find the property between that area, uh, between that range. Uh, uh, then we kind of uh, started looking for the real estate agent. Uh, it is important to find a re good real estate agent who will you know, help you out throughout and uh, also uh, who will guide you along the way so we uh, since i was in texas for three years i had like pretty good relationships of the people to, uh, that also owns the home so you know i got this real estate agent who was really really good and uh, they also used it my many of my friends also used him uh, as as their agent so that was kind of helpful. And that's how I found the real estate agent. Now, once you found a, find a real estate agent, you know your budget, everything, you need to get pre-approved. Uh, and today's market is, is very important uh, to have your pre-approval later uh, before even you start looking into properties. What's, what's pre-approval for people who don't know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pre-approval is basically that you go to a local lender or any kind of bank or anything and you submit everything they check your credit they check your what is your income uh, what is your debt so if you already own any property or any other debt that you have any other loans that you have uh, they will check those and they will kind of give you the range that for example okay you both are combined uh, uh, are approved, pre-approved for $600,000 or $400,000, whatever it is. So they will kind of give you the range. Okay, this looks good. Uh, you are good to go for $400,000. And that's how you can uh, know that what kind of property you can actually afford to buy. Uh, and then what kind of property you will be approved for once you, uh, once you get the property. Right, yeah. And, um... Yeah, basically pre-approval in a very short way is like, how much money can you, can you, how much loan will you get uh, if you do want to get a loan? It's yeah. kind of a way to just kind of exactly. get, yeah. So, okay, you got pre-approved, um, obviously. Yeah. Everything. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, we got pre-approved, then we started looking into houses. So I was remote, so my friend, who is also my partner, he was kind of on the weekend, during the weekend, during the evenings after work, uh, he started uh, looking into the houses with the uh, uh, agent. And I, I, from here, I would kind of research the market uh, on the Zillow, Redfin, I would research the market, what kind of homes that are getting, we were generally interested because we wanted to rent it out. We were generally interested in three bedroom, two bath or three bath. Yeah, that's a typical, uh, yeah, that's yep. a typical rental property. So uh, yeah, I would kind of in the in that area, I would kind of look from Zillow, okay, in last six months, what are the homes that are sold on that range? How much mm -hmm. they are sold for? Uh, what kind of rental income they are getting? And my real estate agent was really nice. So any property we see, uh, he he told us to give us two things. Um, how much will it rent for? Uh, three things, basically. How much would be your estimated mortgage? Uh, how much would it rent for? And how many days it will take for you to rent it? Because the real estate agent, they generally have the MLS and that from the MLS, they can kind of determine those kind of things mm -hmm. based on the previous history of that area. Mm -hmm. So that was really helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from that, we would make sense of the number. Uh, okay, if we put generally in this today's market, if you put 2020% uh, down, and then on top of that, if you are getting rent which is more than your mortgage uh, then it, it's basically considered a good deal in today's market mm -hmm. so yeah we were kind of matching up the number for each property that we see uh, yeah and in again today's market properties are going like once they are listed they would go like within a day or within two. a day or two yeah so it is very important to act fast as so as long as the property is listed you find a new listing and Especially the rental market, like everybody's exactly in getting into it. Yeah, 
Yep, exactly. And yeah. Texas has been very popular since COVID. So, okay. So now, uh, interesting question. I I don't know if you have answered to this, but uh, when when you invested with your friend, did you guys do like a contract with among both of you that here's how the properties like split it like fifty fifty? Oh, and was there a contract or is it just more like a friendly relationship thing? Uh, uh, we don't have the LLC right now, but yeah, we did have uh, kind of a, in the friendly relationship only we did was making sure that we will put 50% each. So okay. everything from down payment to the mortgage, uh, the, the loan, uh, everything was going to be 50-50 and uh, yeah, that's how we started. And then once we get into the property, then definitely we have the contract uh, on the on the title, property title. Also, we have both names mm -hmm. uh, and, mortgage and on, the, on the mortgage also, we are both 50-50. Uh, okay. And uh, okay, now let's talk about down, down payment um, or before even down payment, let's talk about how much money should one have uh, to get started into real estate age, uh, investment? Yeah, so I think it depends mostly on the area, but typically in uh, typically if you are if you are partnering with someone like this 50-50, then 40k should be good enough. Up to 40-50k should be yeah. good enough. Good enough. Yeah. So that way you can get like 300 to 350, 370 thousand uh, dollar uh, house with down payment, with 20% down payment. If you are going to be the primary resident, then there are some loan, loan types that you can get into as little as three and a half percent down. So which would be like for 300,000 property, that would be less than or around $10,000. So you can get in as little as three and a half percent down only if you are going to be the primary resident. Right, right. Yeah, and again, if you are like three friends of you who just got a job and you, all, all of all three of you got into like maybe Facebook, Microsoft, Google, and made got this bonus signing bonus of forty thousand dollars. All of you have yeah. like, oh, I have forty thousand dollars, and yeah. you want to invest maybe right. twenty thousand each. You sixty thousand exactly. dollars. That's roughly three hundred thousand dollars property. You can invest into something like that. Three three friends of you can all get like you know thirty three percent stake on that property and invest in it. Uh, and all it will be like twenty thousand dollars for you. So it, again, it, don't and, don't buy the new car when you get the bonus. Buy the property. Yes, <laughs> nice. And this this is a good you guy just like me. So so uh, it's awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And again, primary residency. Yes, you can get it for three percent or so. But again, um, there's a mortgage insurance uh, which you have to pay. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. What is mortgage insurance? You are basically paying very less amount from the whole loan you're taking. So your bank will say like, you need to have an insurance on your loan because if you fly away, if you cannot pay, then this insurance company will pay for you. So that's mortgage insurance. And then you have to pay premiums for mortgage insurance. So there's like a lot of con complex things, uh, but if you do find something for like a single house, which has a guest unit and you want to do Airbnb on it and you cannot afford the whole $50,000, that's where you can get into something like that, which is, you know, kind of different deal. So cool. Um, so you got into down payment. Uh, of course, you find found a property. Uh, what, what was that like you know, when you decided like, okay, you we are going with this property. Uh, what kind of things did you like look for in the property? Yeah, so basically we saw around uh, six to seven properties, uh, and every everything in Texas in my area everything was like kind of the same floor plan. So that was good. We were basically looking for something moving ready so mm. we can rent it out the next day or the next week yeah. uh, once we closed or yeah. close on the property. Right. So that was, we were kind of looking at. So we made sure basically what for anyone who is wondering, I would recommend looking into the big things that are okay. Uh, the small things, if even if they're not okay, you can easily fix it up. So for example, you want to make sure the roof is 
maybe new or few years new uh, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that there is no plumbing issue you want to make sure there is no electricity issue those are the things that uh, uh, you know it's hard to fix it, it, or hard to change if you want to change something also the floor plan uh, i have a real estate agent now uh, she told me a very nice things there are three things you cannot change on the property very easily which is the location the floor plan and the square footage it's not very easy to change so make sure you mm -hmm. like the floor plan make sure you like the location uh, so those are the things to make sure um, some of the easy things that can be easily fixable would be carpet if you don't like the carpet there's a dirty carpet you can get the discount on that house for for the dirty carpet but the dirty carpet is not that expensive to uh to replace it yeah to replace yeah uh if you get a dirty paint if you don't like the kitchen counter those are the things that easily you can fix it up so uh that was kind of our approach as well and and th those are the things people uh, like kitchen remodeling and bathroom remodeling. Those are the things they do because it looks nicer. So people go and buy that house exactly. more. <laughs> so you don't want to fall into the trap. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love it. Even the AC system is something I, I would recommend for people to look yeah, for exactly. because that, yeah. it's it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so you found found your property which you loved, and you're like, okay, uh, you know, this is this is the property we want to go for. Um, for for people who don't know, I was gonna ask you this down down payment question, but twenty percent of three hundred three fifty is roughly sixty thousand plus closing cost, another ten fifteen thousand. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a rough amount for anywhere three hundred to three fifty. Again, it depends on you know other things also but you found it what what were your next step like once you signed the deal yeah so once we found the house uh, it was the time to write the offer to the seller uh, so in that case we first as i said earlier uh, our our agent told us all the numbers what kind of rent it can get what kind of mortgage you can get and then good agent will be able to provide some kind of a value report uh, for example especially important in this in this kind of uh, market where the comp it's very competitive market so uh, where they can in the value report you can find out basically in last three months or four months around that area how many homes are sold what they are sold for what they can rent be rented for uh, so based on that you can uh, decide your offer uh, that okay this is the money we want to offer uh, because it is very common in this market to you know properties if the property is listed for like three hundred thousand dollars it, it is very common to get it you know to uh, to be sold that it will get sold for three hundred seventy thousand dollars yeah, yeah. three ten three twenty is also <laughs> in my area washington right now uh the properties are going above like 100k 150k wow. on those, the single family houses so that's wow. why it is very competitive and you want to make sure that uh, your budget makes sense you know you don't want to get emotional about it uh, uh, don't we, get attached knew, yeah. yeah exactly don't get attached even you want to ask yourself these questions if this is my budget if somebody else pays one dollar about this price then i don't want that home anymore because my numbers won't make sense then so that's the mm, kind of question my, my real estate agent told me uh, that's the question you want to ask yourself and then go for the offer so we kind of decided uh it was listed for three hundred thousand uh, dollar about that we kind of we had we uh, kind of decided the range and then we write the offer to the seller uh, did you did did you have to counter it or like you got it up how many offers were there in the house you were there was like uh so it was owned by redfin uh the house oh. was owned by redfin so it was pretty good house everything was you know touched up uh we they they had an open house on the weekend but uh, we put the offer as soon as we saw the house and uh, at that time, uh, since there was not open house is done at that time, uh, we got the, we had like three offers and out of those three, uh, they, even before the open houses, they selected our offer. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, so for people who don't know how this works, um, like he was saying, 
it's not like you like the house and you just go and buy it it's it's not like that you just like you there are thousand other people who are also looking at that house and also wants to buy a house uh, just like that because you liked it so many other people liked it so all of you will be basically saying to the buyer i mean to the owner of the house like hey here's our offer since you said 300000 i mean they you they will say like my asking price so let's say if i want to sell my house uh, i can say 500000 is what i want for this uh, but if uh, dawal wants to buy he say like he he definitely wants it and he can say i will pay 550 and then there might be someone else can say i can pay 575 and then there might be someone else who can say 600 now i get to choose who i want to pick uh, so that's what i meant by multiple offers and in that case their offer got picked and they are like okay we'll go with your offer so uh, nice congratulations you got it thank uh, you thank how, you how man. how old uh, like how when did you get it uh, when did I get it? In March and oh, okay. So March. So uh, as soon as I started looking, so we we contact the real estate agent. For example, this Sunday and next Sunday we were under contract. Looking. Oh. We were under contract. Yeah. yeah. But you did a lot of pre-planning and decision making before that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, it was like even our the agent told us that you know if you like the houses then it, it, this is the timeline that it is uh getting sold like one or two days mm-hmm. uh, so if you really like the house you need to be uh, quick but it, so so the first house that we saw we liked the first house but then it was the first house that we saw we were very confused uh, we should put the offer or not or you know? should look more or, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. kind of the thing <laughs> that was the first thing so but it, that house was even better than the one we got but that's kind of a you know thing uh, mm, you, mm. yeah so, if you like it you need to act fast that's the thing right and um once you obviously bought it and it's been six months yeah. so of uh-huh. March, six to seven months, yeah. seven months uh, roughly okay so you got it you signed the deal you signed like thousands of papers because that's what you do <laughs> over here yeah. <laughs> did you have to fly it or did you do it all uh, no. online? yeah i did it all online uh, i haven't seen the property yet oh <laughs> nice so it's all all by your partner and you uh-huh. Your yeah. like video call. Everything, yeah, everything was done online. There was some kiosk, but uh, at the end, it was all good. Nice. Uh, okay. So uh, again, you know, once you once the offer is accepted, after that, there's also another like this forty five days to sixty days of this period where a lot of inspection happens, right, mm-hmm. uh, on the house. Like, okay. Because the offer is accepted doesn't mean that it's all done deal. After that, you can do inspect and you can check out like, is the roof right? Is the electricity right? It's uh, There's no like bugs problem and all of that. And mm-hmm. and if everything is good, then, you know, it, it all passes. Um, and while that is happening, your lender is working on figuring out all your mortgage stuff. Uh, right. Um, so you got the house. Did you have to do anything before you set it up for the renter or like it was all ready? Uh, no, it, it was almost completely ready. The inspection report looked pretty good. Uh, so uh, everything was ready in the spec- inspection. There was some some problem, minor problems, like some of the outlets were not working. One of the gas was not mm-hmm. working, mm-hmm. Uh, those kind of things. So for those, we either ask them. So for those who don't know, inspection is like your like your second chance to negotiate. Uh, for example, if, if you inspect the property, you found find something wrong, uh, you can ask the seller for the credit for that money, or even you can, you can reduce the price uh, by whatever you're going to fix it for. So in my case, we did ask a seller to fix it. So it was Redfin. So they kind of quickly fixed it. Inspection is for for the people. Is inspection is also one of your last kind of chance to walk away from the property. Mm. Uh, so there are like few days of gap between you. So if you feel like you rushed into the property and then later you 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 think you don't you're not gonna like the property or you don't like 
and if you want to walk away from the property inspection is like like your excuse it, it can be your excuse where generally you don't need a reason uh, you can just for silly reasons you can just say i don't like the inspection report and i want to walk away so that is also your last kind of chance to yeah. walk away yeah, yeah. So, so yeah in my yeah. case uh, we didn't have to fix much uh, there were minus things they fixed it and then it was already uh, for close nice uh, and after that did you have to spend money obviously uh, you probably didn't because you are getting a long term renter right not an airbnb uh yeah we we signed up the lease for like 12 months hmm. uh, yeah so okay and so so they probably bought all the furniture and everything you didn't have to buy any anything for that is correct yeah no no furniture from our side yeah okay okay so once the house was ready once you got it one once you got the keys how long did it take you to find the renter and what was the process for you to find the renter yeah sure so for me it took like one week one more mm. week after the closing uh, so once we close the property you, there are like three ways you can find the renter uh, one is the property manager uh, obviously if you are going to later on use the property manager for to manage your property uh, then they would kind of list it on zillow or list it on redfin and then they any renter any tenant that would like to rent your house uh, they can call them and they will show the houses to house to them so that is one way property manager would kind of take from each month of rent and they would take 8 to 10% and on that they would manage your property uh, the option i uh, the second option would be to use the agent so i personally used my real estate agent who was also working on the rental things mm -hmm. so in that case they would take half half rent of half of your first month rent and uh, they would do listing on the zillow redfin on uh, everything they will show the property they will make sure they take nice pictures and upload it on zillow and everything uh, so that's the option i use and the third option is also you can do everything by yourself uh, but that would take some kind of work and that would also that is also not totally free uh, zillow we charge you uh, to list the property on their on their website uh, once you find the tenant, uh, uh, once you find multiple applications or any application, you would want to run credit for those and you would want to check everything. So running the credit would also cost you some money. So that's the reason we used a real estate agent. Uh, so we we give him the half month rent and it was pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So and it, that's only one time payment, not like if that's now... correct. So that renters know you as a owner, right? Like the agent is just in the middle place uh, to get all the things done. Contract is signed. Now the renter will communicate with you guys versus agent. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, the agent is just there for getting, getting the you the tenant, yeah. uh, not the not managing your property. So once you your house is rented out, then the agent is out of the picture. Anything after that uh, is between you and the tenant. Okay, okay. And if the next year, let's say after twelve months, uh, they want to renew the land, uh, rent, uh, uh, renew the lease, they'll just come to you and say like, "Hey, we want to extend it, uh, right?" Uh, and yeah, you guys will just correct. do the paperwork. Uh, yep, that's right. We just need to renew the leasing document. We will do the paperwork, and then it should be good. How? How does the leasing contract work and all of that? Like, how did you figure out like what to put in leasing document and all that? Or did that also, you took help from agent? Uh, yeah, so agent helped us uh, a little bit, but I also did some of the some of the research for that. So for leasing, definitely you want to make sure some of the things uh, before, before even you get to the leasing part, you want to run the credit for the tenant, mm -hmm. whatever applications you get for the, you want to make sure there is, you know, their income is good enough to pay the monthly rent. Uh, otherwise, you know, if they get into the houses, they are not able to pay the rent, then again, it's a problem. So yeah, especially in, in, in California, um, the, during the yeah, COVID, they were allowed not to pay rent at all. <laughs> 
yeah but uh, in that case also there was some benefits to the ten uh, to the homeowners as well right from the city right yeah you don't have to pay the mortgage or something like that yeah so yeah it's generally if if the government comes in save the tenant they would save the homeowners Owners as well the, yeah that's yeah. the that's the general thing but anything could go wrong as well yeah mm -hmm. so on the leasing leasing agreement uh, you want to make sure any small thing that you want to put in you can definitely put it in for example you know front yard backyard loan morning is your responsibility if you get a ticket for that you have to pay it and you are responsible for that we are not responsible for that those kind mm -hmm. of things even mm -hmm. if there are some small things also one of the things that i found out later on is the dog breeds so if if your tenant wants to have uh, some pets uh, there are like kind of 14 dog breeds that are kind of considered aggressive and your oh. insurance won't cover them your insurance won't cover them so that thing also you might want to put in in the contract that these are the 14 breeds we won't allow or even if you want to bring them then you have to get it under insured under under your insurance mm -hmm. so yeah for example if uh if if uh, if you rent the property and there is a dog that bites someone that someone could sue you because they won't sue the tenant who is living in there they will sue you and oh. then then that sue cause if you lose that uh, law lawsuit then your insurance won't cover because wow. because of the dog breed so that thing I found out later, but uh, you also want to make sure those kind of little things you put in there uh, before even you do any agreement. Of course, all the property damages and everything you cover in that as well. Uh, yeah, correct. So how long did it take you from getting the house of key to finding a renter? Uh, finding a renter would be like one week. Uh, find like one week in one week we were all set uh, we checked the credit and we got the application we were ready to rent them and then move in was about like 15 days uh, so, so so within one month you already had a renter and mm -hmm. um, like after your first month you were basically having someone else start to pay your mortgage yeah that is correct and i think even first month you don't even have to pay mortgage because your down payment would yeah. cover that your mortgage will start start from the second month. Yeah, second month, right? Uh, okay. So, uh, and are you making profit, or are you? Is it just covering your taxes and mortgage? Yeah, I'm making little profit on top of that, <laughs> so a little bit yeah, positive cash flow. There is there. Nice, and that yeah. could be you know used for like some emergency, something you have to fix up or something like that. Exactly, exactly, or even the vacancy. So whenever we calculate, we make sure we calculate. We consider these three things: uh, vacancy, uh, repairs, and I don't know. There was something else, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, those kind of things we take into consideration. So like depending on on your house uh, house, uh, you would you would uh, uh, consider like 5% of the rent or 10% of the rent each month. And based on that, you would calculate your cash flow. Again, thank you so much. I mean, this, I know we've been talking for almost an hour and this has been such an eye opening and so inspiring and very encouraging. I have my doubts and I have my hesitation too, but I'm, I'm hoping the people who are watching this also getting confidence, like, okay, we can do it. Uh, even if it is remote, we can still do it. Like two people, three people coming together and they can do it. Uh, what's your advice for the people who are like hesitant, who are scared and who are like not sure if they should get in? They have the money. They don't know if they should jump in or not. What What's your advice? Yeah, I would just say, you know, if you really want to get in, this is one of the best ways to, you know, have, your net worth increased uh, every month by the tenant, by somebody else. Once you, you of course, are taking some responsibility, but uh, to start, you know, it, don't wait to figure out everything uh, and then you will start, you know. Uh, you can just start now. You can find, a, if you already have the down payment and everything, you can find a area, you can decide the area, you can find a good uh, 
agent and they will help you out along the way all your questions will be answered so in every property or in any property that you would buy there would be something that comes up that you don't know so it is very hard to know everything from the beginning uh, definitely uh, you will get help from a lot of people your local lender your agent would help you out out uh, in every situation so that's kind of my advice. That's awesome. Again, I'll leave your, uh, if people, you have questions about all of this, and if you want to talk to him, I'll leave his information in the, in, when I say information, I will leave your LinkedIn so people can talk to you. Uh, sure. Also, if you're interested in network engineer or Amazon, how to get into it, please let us know in the comment section. I am more interested. So I know we will do it, but I want to see if people are really interested in knowing yeah. network engineer and career in Amazon and life in Amazon. So that'll be awesome. This was so much fun. Again, I really appreciate you sharing your journey and inspiring so many of us. Uh, so thank you for doing this. And until our next one. Uh, keep smiling, keep hustling. Thank you so much. You you should say it in Gujarati. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Are you yeah. <laughs> Hasta raho. What was that? Hasta raho and hasal karta raho. Mehnat karta raho. Mehnat karta raho.